We're joining Vincent LaFerre again, an amazingly talented photographer. He was talking about how he learned early on street photography and how to bend the rules. His dad actually gave him some very interesting lessons. Let's join him. I think it comes from my father and my upbringing. You know, he was the one that would say things like, uh, there's a very Latin spirit, I'm French. Uh, and a U.S., you know, and an American, I'm both. And But my, my family, my mother and my father are French, and I would go see my father, who's always lived in France. And he would tell me, you're far too American. This is when I was 15. And he's <laughs> like, what do you mean? He's like, you follow the rules. You know, you do everything they tell you to do. And he's like, in the in France, we have this thing called this the Latin spirit, which says that any law is written, and it's meant, it's therefore meant to be broken. You know, <laughs> it's it. this kind of anti-establishment way of thinking. And in fact, I mean, I can tell you the whole story. He's like, you know, I want you to, he said, I want you to go into this uh, grocery store and I want you to steal something. And I'm like, what? what? He's like, no, you need to learn how to steal. Doing that and controlling your emotions and getting away with it. And you need to learn what that feels like and, you know, see if you can get away with it. And here I was, as you know, I think I was 13 or 12, and you know, sweating and going to steal a, I don't know what I still don't remember. And I came out of the store, having succeeded my mission. He's like, okay, good. Well, that was the easy part. Now you got to go get it. You got to go put it back without getting caught. That's the really hard part. Now that you're guilty. And I did. And you know, the next thing was. I want you to go into this concert venue and go to the front of the stage and photograph. Uh, the one key is you have no credential and you're 16 years old. Go for it. Wow. And we talk about getting past a security guard. And he's like, well, <laughs> you have to. You can't walk too slowly because I'll take interest in you. You absolutely can't make eye contact for longer than a quarter second. So, you know, what you don't want to do is you don't want to look away. Because then the guard will take interest in you. You don't want to walk too fast because they think they're going to try to get past them. You yeah. don't want to walk too slow because they'll think you have doubt. You have to walk at the exact right pace that states, I've got somewhere to go. I belong here and I need to go do something. The Jedi Knight? Quick. Yeah, it was literally like teaching me to be a Jedi Knight. Just a You've Jedi got to make Knight a quick move. eye contact as in to, you have to acknowledge them. But you have to believe in that this is your purpose You've got work to do. And if they stop you, you have to say, I'm just going to go, you know, I'm, I'm going to the front of stage and just keep going. And if they really stop you, just you know, ask you where your credential is. You have to react so shocked that, what do you mean, where's my credential? I look around for it, come instantly and say, oh, it's back there. I'll be right back. You know, and not give in to getting caught. And I showed up on the front of uh, a Rolling Stones concert um, and photographed Keith Richards uh, from, you know, the front row. I snuck into the U.S. Open tennis for three years straight via the player's entrance and photographed it. So, and that's all from my father. Just that's saying, really amazing coaching from your dad. Far too much. And uh, he's not a criminal. Um, you know, he got, my favorite story from him is he got pulled over by a cop uh, for burning a red light. And he said to the cop, are you sure? Just the, and the cop, you know, he's giving red light tickets all day, was so put off by this guy's, you know, daring and also by how could he said, I did not burn a red light. Are you, I, I can tell you, I absolutely did not for sure. Are you sure? And the cop doubted himself and let him go. And my father's laughing his ass off the whole way back. Wow. But that's my dad. So from that comes this refusal to do things the normal way and and what I would call an abject refusal to repeat myself. I love it. I just do it. I love it. We could do a whole course out of this, Vincent. I mean, you know, okay, so we'll just repeat those exercises. Go to the store, steal some No, no, no. Don't steal anything, please. <laughs> you know, you are analyzing people and their emotion. Just looking at your comments from Lorraine Spencer, she said, I asked a guy if I could take his picture first time I did that. Turned out I couldn't take it because he was at work and it wasn't allowed, but I got the courage at least. And that's great. You know, go get the courage, build it up. Um, I can't tell you how many interesting people I photographed who say, like, why are you wasting your time? And this is for the New York Times on assignments. Yeah. Why are you wasting your time taking my picture? I do this every day. And I would say, because it's really interesting. And I know to you, it's just what you do every day, but to someone else, you know, there's value in what you do and people find interest in it. I find it interesting. Here's what I find interesting about it. And I said, you know, let's go back to doing what you're doing. Forget I'm here. 
don't don't act for me, especially as a photojournalist. I couldn't direct people. I would just say, you know, just go back to doing what you're doing. Forget I'm here, and you know, let me do my job, and you know, trust me. And um, I can't tell you, you know, how uh, many great experiences I have as a result of that because people do eventually forget you, you, you that you're there. And more importantly, they they sense that aura about you. You've probably noticed some people are really good about being a fly on the wall or being out of the way. My father was a set photographer, which meant he worked on movie sets. Uh And I started when I was 15 doing that as well. And you're basically the biggest persona non grata on set because you're not a crew member. You don't carry cases. You don't contribute to the film. You're just always in the way. So people really don't want you there. They hate the set photographer. And you have to find a way to ingratiate yourself to get the images that they're ultimately going to use, you know, in the magazine or on the poster to promote the film. And you're truly not wanted. You're, you're a pain in the butt. And I'm now a director and I see set photographers. I understand for the first time, and this is like, it's been 10 years now, but the last thing I need is one more X factor. I don't need someone walking on my set, getting in the way, tripping on something, distracting someone. Yeah. Because I have so much stress and stuff that I am controlling. You know, I've got 60 crew members and I've got five or 10 actors uh, or other things I'm trying to control that I can't. I don't need more X factors, but of course I, I treat them as well as I can because I started off doing that. You know, and I'm like, just go do your job. Just don't stand here or there and stay don't out. Trip of over any cables. Yeah, and they know that and uh, they appreciate it. You know, and I'll go out of my way to say, do you need something? Can I do something to help you? And they're like, what? <laughs> You're asking me if you can do something to help my job? <laughs> no one asks that. I'm like, and I tell them where I came from. They're like, oh, well, that's pretty special. That's cool. Yeah, I'd love to get this if you can give me 30 seconds. I'm like, absolutely. You know, so. You had a great mentor. I think that's fantastic. And your dad. And I did. we all could use somebody to push us into those, you know, past our, our comfort level for sure. He is the nicest. My dad and I have had one fight in 45 years. Unbelievable. So just idea, right? He's nicest, easiest go. As much as he sounds like a kook, he's really a very cool down to earth guy. And, but when I started photography when I was 15, I remember clearly um, I pull, I gave him 30 original slides from the month. He's like, you know, take all the work you've done this month and pick 30 slides. And I handed him 30 slides, and he took, you know, 10 slides on one side, and he put 20 slides on the other side. He opened his drawer up, pulled a pair of scissors, and went right through 20 slides, destroying them instantly. Now, you might feel like this guy is, like, the the harshest guy in the world. He's not. He really isn't. But he did it once in my life. And I said, because, you know, these are originals. What have you done? Like, what happened? And he's like, those images are not sharp. They're out of focus. And they're not well exposed. I don't want to. I don't want to see that. You need to technically be sound, if not excellent, and then you know that won't get in the way of you telling your stories. And that helped. As harsh as that was, um, I also photographed like a little duck. You know, the black and white fellow made a print, and he put yeah. it on his well cigarette in it on a sharpie, right? So he tried to steer me <laughs> in a passive aggressive way. And that, tough that duck, love. Very tough love, but you know, I became for better or for worse, a very technical photographer early yeah. on. You know, I had no motion blur in my images. You know, that was a, a mistake. Whereas now I love motion blur, you know, but it took me years to get over that. But that helped my career along in that I was shooting for time in Newsweek when I was 17, 18 years old. Because, you know, whether or not my images were great or not, they were very technically sound. So they made a lot of double trucks and covers because they were tack sharp, mm. full frame, perfectly composed. All the frames you see here are shot full frame in camera. There's no cropping. And mm-hmm. that went to my my first job out of college. You know, first I photographed for the wire services for AFP and Reuters. I photographed Michael J- Jordan's last five seasons. You were shooting on chrome. So imagine any of these images yeah. shot on transparency film. So if you're one stop overexposed, it's unusable or under. It has to, The exposure has to be dead on. Um, and this is before digital, right? So you have to actually use light meter and make calculations. Yeah. Uh, also, they don't crop chrome. So you're either capturing in camera on the 24 by 36 millimeter um, slide. And if you have to crop more than 5% if at all, they would throw it out, literally, just like in the bin. Yeah. And I remember you know, having this really, really good image, but it was a little loose. And Daryl said, 
it's not quite there, mate. It's just not quite there. And he flew the slide across the room and it floated into the bin. And it's like, you know, you spent your whole weekend, you know, flying from L.A. to the Midwest to shoot, you know, a college game in, in Michigan that Saturday. And then you jumped on a plane to go shoot an NFL game that Sunday. And then you took the, you know, a 6 a.m. flight or a last flight available to get back to LA to process your film by month. You get the idea. Yeah. So you're utterly exhausted come Monday night and you got this guy telling you, it's just not quite there, mate. It's in the bin. And you just want to pull your hair out. But that taught you the discipline to say, all right, if I'm debating between a 400 millimeter or a 500 millimeter, I'm going to go to the 500 mil, even yeah. though my chances are a 300 mil to 500. My chance, like that frame right there is, is full frame. And you can see the bubble coming if you can't see it on the screen. There's actually a bubble of spit coming off his, his uh, lips. Oh, yes. And, um, you know, you don't get that until you push yourself. Now, I'm not saying that tight is always right, but that is one of my rules. You know, when in doubt, go tight. So go tight. one lens tighter. Or go two lenses tighter. Don't widen out unless it really adds to your story. You know, um, I tell people to treat the frame like it's um, on your wall in a frame. And you have to include stuff that adds to the image and you have to exclude everything that distracts from it. You know, and uh, you got to do that in camera, not in post. It's always great having you guys with us. It means so much to me to have your support. Hey, listen, if you haven't already done it, please subscribe, enable the bell, like the video, share with your friends. We want to get these videos out to the whole world. Leave your comments. I read every one of them. I try to respond to them all. And listen, stay safe, stay well, and remember to get out and capture your own images of life.